Welcome back folks. For today's video we're going to be taking a quick look at the newly released Dragon Quest Illustrations book that Viz Media put out. It's a, a nice hardcover art book illustrated by Akira Toriyama of, of uh, Dragon Quest fame and it shows a lot of his drawings throughout the years. So we're gonna take a nice look at the book and I'll show you guys some of the pages. You can get a, a little bit of a feel for it before you buy it. So on the side here we have Dragon Quest illustrations, Akira Toriyama, and on the back there's a little collage of different image, images throughout the years. 30 years of genius on display in this comprehensive collection of over 500 of Akira Toriyama's stunning illustrations. And as you can see it it's a nice it's a nice book. It's nice. It's, um, has a nice cover and everything and if you look closely you can kind of tell that the character portraits on the cover are protrude a little bit they're kind of bumpy which is nice not sure if you can tell from the video but it's a very it's a very nice cover overall so now taking a look on the inside There appears to be a little fold-out kind of poster with all of the main characters of the Dragon Quest series. Let me just fold this out. There you go. It's not really a poster, it's more of a fold-out. And behind it there is a timeline of all of the Dragon Quest releases over the years to the present, which is pretty nice. And tells you the year it came out, which game it is, what console it was for, and I do like that they included this in the book as well. It's very nice. And this appears to be the Japanese release dates they're talking about, so the timeline includes Japanese releases that have not been localized yet. So moving on, there is a excerpt from Akira Toriyama himself in the first page. So there's his self-portrait right there. He's dressed like Dragon Quest Three protagonist. It says here, he was born April 5th. There's a, if you want to read this, you can always pause it. So basically, Toriyama met Yuji Horii when working at Shonen Jump, and Toriyama, of course, was working on the manga Dragon Ball, and Yuji Horii was a writer for Shonen Jump, and basically they decided to work together on this new role-playing game, and they promoted the game Dragon Quest through Shonen Jump, which is how it became so successful. So. If you want to read that, you can just pause the video, I suppose. We'll keep moving on. Here's the first section, which covers the original trilogy of Dragon Quest on the NES. We got some monster designs here from the original Dragon Quest. There's Dragon Lord, different kinds of monsters as well on the other pages. And these are very nice, glossy, sort of high resolution images. This is probably the best art collection we've had of Dragon Quest for a long time. We've never had anything this big before. This in particular is a very interesting page. Toriyama once famously mentioned that he had trouble doing pixel art and we didn't really know what that meant but it turns out he actually drew the way the pixelated sprites are supposed to look like next to the original portraits which I thought was cool. So there's more Dragon Quest 2 art here on this page. Very cool. And this continues Dragon Quest 2. Now we move on to Dragon Quest 3. And these are the heroes of Dragon Quest 3, including the main character, the Yusha, also known as the brave hero of DQ3. And these are some nice images. Especially the one on the left, he Toriyama actually drew that on a gray piece of paper for the cover art of Dragon Quest 3. And here are the rest of the character classes that you can play as. These are all the character classes from the original NES version. And this is the Game Boy Color promotional art of Erdrick on the cliff with his sword. And these are the new classes, the, the thieves of Dragon Quest 3. Now these are the bosses of Dragon Quest 3. There's Zoma, Baramos, and the red, the red character right there. That's a, an unused monster design, unused boss that they did not use in the original Dragon Quest that was originally planned, but it was scrapped. So that's some pretty cool trivia right there. 
I've never seen that before ever. This is the first time I've seen that picture, so it's pretty neat. Moving on. These are some more Dragon Quest 3 images. And the next section is the Zenithian Trilogy 4, 5, and 6 with SNES. Well, this is the NES version. So there's Solo, the main character. There's Sof uh, Sophia, there's Ragnar, Elena, Tornico, you know, the, the sisters. This is all um, original artwork, not the remake. So this is still original art. And this would be the remake artworks. Here's Sorrow. And he has a very sort of elf-looking appearance. And this is Sorrow's original look from the NES artwork. So in the original Dragon Quest, he, he had this yellow form, which was later retconned into becoming the character S. Stark. But in the original, his name was Sorrow the Manslayer, and he would, throughout the fight, transform gradually into the green image you see on the right. So. The one on the left is now known as S. Stark, but originally he was Sauron the Manslayer's first form and Sauron the Manslayer's final form. So he had two different forms in the original NES version, which they changed in the DS remake later on, which I thought was pretty cool. So moving on. There's more Dragon Quest IV monsters. And these drawings are very, very nice. They're very high quality printings. Probably recognize that from Dragon Quest XI. A lot of familiar, familiar monsters around here. And now we're moving on to Dragon Quest V, and this is the SNES artwork. So you have all the characters there, lots of monsters. This is mostly artwork you might have seen on the internet. It's nothing exclusive yet, but you know, we have Dragon Quest VI here, some nice images from there. And these are the DS remake por portraits for the, the remake, of course, which are a little bit nicer. And here are some of the villains of Dragon Quest VI. And here is an unused character drawing. This looks kind of like an early concept for Terry, but this character has no name and he's unused from Dragon Quest VI. Here, if you want to get a look, closer look at this character, he definitely does look like an earlier version of Terry, but yeah, this character is not in Dragon Quest VI and is just a concept drawing of an unused character, as you can see. 1995, unused. So that's some pretty neat stuff. I've never seen that drawing before. It's very cool. And now we're moving on to spin-offs and TV shows. This is the Dragon Quest anime. This is actually not by Toriyama himself. This is made in the style of Akira Toriyama, which is very faithful to the original style of Dragon Quest, the Dragon Quest TV shows. I don't believe he worked on any of the Dragon Quest TV shows. They're all just based off of his work. So as you can see, this is the first Dragon Quest anime, and it looks a lot like his art style. And here are some spin-off games, Tornico's Mystery Dungeon games, uh, very good games. There's Terry's Dragon Quest Monsters, and these are original drawings for the promotional art for the Game Boy Color version of Dragon Quest Monsters. You can see Tara and Kobe there too. So moving on, we have Dragon Warrior 7, which it was, that's what it was called here, but that's the original artwork for the cover. And it's a very big drawing, it's very nice looking. And there's a lot of art here I've never seen before, additionally. These are some pretty good pieces. Here are some more images from the original release of Dragon Quest VII. Different characters. And some enemies as well. I also like the little notes by the characters. It's, it looks like it's written in pencil. 
So here is the motion controller game for Dragon Quest, uh, Kenshin Dragon Quest. That is the reboot version of Erdrick's Descendant. He has blonde hair in this version. This is a a game with like a TV a TV game with like a motion controller where you fight monsters. So there's Zoma who appear in the game, and there's the Dragon Lord on the left. So uh, yeah, that's some pretty clean art that right there. It's very nice looking. And there's Rocket Slime, of course, everyone's favorite spinoff. So we have the original Rocket Slime for Game Boy, the DS version of Rocket Slime, which is a very nice game. And that's the cover art right there on the right. And moving on, we have Dragon Quest VIII for the PS2. And there's a lot of art here that I've never seen before. Like this drawing on the right, I have not seen before. Promotional art for Dragon Quest VIII with the hero with his fist in the air. And it looks really nice. But yeah, I've never seen that before, so that's a, a new picture I've seen. The one on the left, is, of course, is the box art for the game. I've never seen the one on the left right here. That's a new picture. I've seen the one on the right right here before, but uh, yeah, the one on the left I've never seen before, so that's, that's a nice drawing I've seen. And continuing onwards, there's the 3DS cover art. Here are some character sketches for the main character. Some for Yangus and Jessica. Showing off their expressions in the little black and white drawings. And here's some more art I have not seen before. Here's uh, Princess Medea. I haven't seen the, these drawings before. So that's pretty nice. And there's Dual Magus on the left and some NPCs on the right. And more NPC designs from the rest of Dragon Quest VIII. And it looks very authentic, it looks very close to the final product. More NPCs. I'll zoom in a little closer, I bet you guys like this one. <laughs> the bunny girl and the dancer. Yeah, Toriyama knows how to... he knows how to draw the ladies really well. So anyway, we'll be moving on from there. And just more character designs from Dragon Quest VIII, and there's Rapthorn. Very cool. And next we have Dragon Quest IX art, and there's not much new here that I haven't, I haven't seen, because Dragon Quest IX came out when the internet was still a big thing. So most of this art is pretty much on the internet right now. There's not a lot of new stuff, but it's still pretty well, it's nicely printed either way. Now there is some cut content from Dragon Quest IX which is put on display here. There are some costumes and character classes right here on these two pages that have been unused and are not in the final game for Dragon Quest IX. As you can see, these outfits are not in the final game. This, uh, this outfit looks kind of like the main protagonist of Dragon Quest VII, a little bit like him. And this one looks a little, uh, looks a little goofy. He's got like these animal ears and looks kind of like a shaman, like, like a wolf kind of. It's kind of weird. Would have been cool though if it was in the game. And here are the spin-off illustrations. There is Erdrick's Descendant from the motion game. There's the Prince of Middenhall, Erdrick the Hero on the right main character Dragon Quest 3, and these are some nice drawings as well. They're all in the same pose. There's Solo, the hero, and on the right, that is the legendary monster tamer from Dragon Quest 5. That's what they're referring to him as in this in this book. The main hero of Dragon Quest 6 is referred to in this book as Wreck, the hero, so that's his canonical name. I'll uh, show you a little bit closer. Yep, Wreck, the hero, so that's his official name, if you ever want to use the canon name when playing Dragon Quest VI next time. And here we have some artwork from Dragon Quest X, the MMO. And it's pretty nice here, but not nothing we haven't really seen before. It's a lot of familiar stuff because, you know, Dragon Quest X came out during a time when the internet was still pretty big. So here's some more spin-off stuff, Dragon Quest Heroes illustrations. And got some nice designs here from Dragon Quest Heroes 2. I like the way the, uh, these characters look. Yeah, it's very nice looking. There's Caesar. He's very berserk looking. And we'll continue onwards. 
Here's Dragon Quest Builders, that would be the front and back art of the game. I actually own a poster of this exact artwork right here. Moving onwards. That would end Dragon Quest Builders coverage. And for Dragon Quest XI, there's only one picture in the entire book for Dragon Quest XI. It's just, it's just this picture of the Luminary, and that's it. So I guess they just don't want to spoil the game or something, but uh, it's a little bit disappointing with the Dragon Quest XI art. Anyway, there's some analysis of Dragon Quest illustrations back here, which is really cool, and I would recommend checking this out. It gives a lot of insight into the history. Like, for example, uh, Akira Toriyama had his own newsletter called Birdland Press, and right here, as you can see, he actually spoils Zoma from Dragon Quest III, who's the secret boss of Dragon Quest III. This magazine came out before DQ3 came out, and he still has Zoma on the cover, so he actually completely spoiled the uh, game with his newsletter. And here's a, a postcard from Toriyama, first fan club. But anyway, if you decide to pick up this book, this is a very interesting section, which talks a lot about the production of Dragon Quest and the art behind it. And it's very insightful. It's very it's very neat. So moving onwards, there is some more interviews here, some more information. And in the very back, there is a message from Yuji Horii, the game designer behind Dragon Quest, the creator of Dragon Quest. And it talks about how he met Toriyama, I'll let you pause the thing. And of course he drew that himself. Yuji Hori drew this because that's his art style. He's, he's also a little bit of an artist himself. And I would know because I own his autograph. So that's that's his drawing. Thanks for everything over the years, Toriyama-san. And right here talks about how they met at Shonen Jump. You could pause that if you want to read it. But it's a, it's a neat story. It's a pretty cool story. And on the back page, we can take a quick look at some of the details. This is a first printing, first edition of Dragon Quest illustrations, as you can see, December 2018. So this is this is the first first edition of the book, and it will likely be worth millions of dollars in the future. So that is Dragon Quest illustrations, the newly released Dragon Quest art book by Viz Media, and I'm just amazed that we even got this. To be honest, like it's it's really cool that Viz actually put out a Dragon Quest illustrations book in English for you know the few fans who want to check something out like this and i'm very very happy with this book if you're like a big dragon quest fan and you want to see behind the scenes things and art and how the characters were created i would 100 percent recommend picking this one up so yeah i hope you guys found this video helpful in case any of you are thinking of picking up this book and i'll see you guys next time